Did Cain's descendants interact with the Nephilim and Watchers? In fact, did the Watchers end the line of Cain? In Genesis 4, we are given a list of descendants of Cain. Cain, who was Adam's son, you know, the one who killed his brother Abel, his line ends abruptly. Could it be that his descendants are the ones who interbred with the Watchers? That's what we're talking about today, and we're starting right now. Cain's line ends or is cut off at some point, but it appears it might not have been because of the flood. The last descendant was a female, which is kind of odd. She is mentioned and then it ends. Why? Was she the last person in that line to be 100% human? The Watchers or Sons of God entered the biblical narrative in Genesis 6 and they corrupted mankind, not just with their DNA but also teaching humans to sin better by giving them technology. So when we also see that Cain's descendants get advanced technology, advanced for its time, how did they get it? Cain and his descendants are, humanly speaking, a pretty impressive bunch. They build cities. They create technology, music, and culture. Their daughters are renowned for their beauty. We don't hear any of that about the righteous line of Seth. And the last father in the line, Lamech, is a powerful, violent, boastful guy who introduces polygamy. Did he think that if Adam had a single wife, Eve, would two helpers, two wives, not be even better? All told, it is a very interesting genealogy, to say the least. One that you will see supports the account in the apocryphal book of Enoch as well. And for all this, we need to give a shout out to a member of our advisory board, Michael Tarrant, for turning us on to this whole idea about Cain and his genealogy. So why did all this happen? Well, God promised Eve that her seed would crush the head of the serpent. At that time, there was probably a question about where this seed was going to come from. Satan was thinking about that as well and trying to corrupt both the righteous and unrighteous lines because he didn't want to get his head crushed. So let's start this look back into time with the passage about Cain's genealogy from Genesis 4. Cain had relations with his wife and she conceived and gave birth to Enoch and Cain built a city and named the city Enoch after the name of his son. Now to Enoch was born Erod, and Erod fathered Mahuajal, and Mahuajal fathered Methushalal, and Methushalal fathered Lamech. Lamech took two wives for himself. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabal. He was the father of those who live in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all those who play the lyre and the flute. As for Zillah, she also gave birth to Tubal Cain, the forger of all implements of bronze and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. Probably what jumps out at you first is that two of the descendants of Cain have the same names as two of Seth's righteous descendants, Enoch and Lamech, which is interesting. Now, they're not the same people, but they have the same names. And we're going to find out why that might be in just a second. Let's look at a comparison of these names in the righteous line of Seth and the unrighteous line of Cain first, because it will absolutely blow you away. We're about to uncover something not seen by any other ministry, and I think it's very, very significant. If we read the meaning of the names of the righteous generations from Adam to Noah in order, we come up with this amazing but somewhat well-known prophecy. Man appointed mortal sorrow, the blessed God shall come down teaching. His death will bring the despairing comfort. In essence, it means that man is appointed to live a life of sorrow due to the fall. But God himself shall come down from heaven teaching us. That was, of course, Jesus who came down and that his death brought the despairing comfort. That death, of course, was his death on the cross. That is well known. But this ministry has also discovered that there are two other lists of names with hidden meanings. First, that the meaning of the names of the tribes in Revelation 7 that make up the 144,000 have a very similar prophetic meaning to them. 
Click on the upper right if you want to see a video about that topic. So based on these two other hidden messages found in lists of names or genealogies, our thinking here was that perhaps the genealogy of Cain also provides a similar message. And not surprisingly, it does. When you read the meaning of the names of Cain's descendants in order, this is what it says. Man acquires teaching from a dragon destroyed by God. God will kill by sword the despairing offspring of Cain in a stream at the blowing of the ram's horn. This is a pretty amazing message that Cain's offspring will acquire teaching from a dragon, or in other words, from Satan, and then be killed in a stream or flood, which is exactly what happened. Interestingly, this also suggests that it happened at the blowing of a ram's horn. This, of course, is not part of the biblical record, or really part of the record in any of the apocryphal books. But it is interesting, since the flood was the first wrath of God. The coming future wrath is announced by a ram's horn or shofar blown by Jesus himself, the trumpet of God. So this might indicate the first wrath of God was as well. It's something to consider. And both prophetic sentences based on genealogies contain the idea of teaching. This is where the name Enoch comes in. The righteous are taught by God through Jesus and the unrighteous are taught by a dragon who is Satan. It's a very important point of comparison. This idea of Cain's descendants being taught by Satan is amazingly like the concept found in the apocryphal book of 1st Enoch, where the watchers taught humans all sorts of technology and magic, technology and magic that matches what we see in the biblical record. But before we look at the book of Enoch, let's also look at the three names we didn't examine yet, the names of the two wives of Lamech from Cain's line and his daughter. They are the only women in these genealogies which make those names stand out. Why are they there? Lamech's first wife was Ada, which meant ornament, and his second wife's name was Zillah, which means shadow of darkness. Zillah's daughter, Naama, means lovely one. Let's start with her. This name, lovely one, implies she was beautiful, and Genesis 6 speaks of exactly this that the beauty of the daughters of men attracted the watchers or fallen angels. Now it came about when mankind began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. So is this daughter of Lamech the last of Cain's line because she interbred with the watchers and had hybrid children? The text kind of seems to imply this based on her name, about being the beautiful one, and the account in Genesis 6. If so, she was the last 100% human in Cain's line. She ended the line by her sin with the Watchers. The rest of Lamech's family seems to have had interaction with the Watchers too. They seem to have been taught by them. We learn about these things from the book of 1st Enoch. And they took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go into them, and mixed with them, and taught them charms, and conjurations, and made them acquainted with the cutting of roots and woods. This is the teaching of the dark arts, of magic. And this seems to be what Zilla's name means, shadow of darkness. First Enoch continues, and Azazel taught mankind to make swords and knives and shields and coats of mail and taught them to see what was behind them. Lamech himself was a violent man, and it looks like Azazel taught him this aspect. Here is what Lamech said in Genesis 4. For I have killed a man for wounding me, and a boy for striking me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech seventy-seven times. So Lamech was a very violent guy. Genesis 6 talks about this as well. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God and the earth was filled with violence. It is one of the reasons God sent the flood. The book of Enoch continues about what Azazel taught. 
and their works of art, bracelets and ornaments, and the use of rouge, and the beautifying of eyebrows, and the dearest and choicest stones, and all coloring substances and the metals of the earth. This speaks of the use of cosmetics, which is what is implied by Ada's name meaning ornament. Works of art are what was taught to Jubal, the musician, working with metal is what Tubal Cain learned. The Book of Enoch also speaks of raising animals in an offhand way. It speaks of the giants eating all the produce and animals of men, but you know, it doesn't speak about the watchers teaching shepherding. So Jabal, the shepherd, isn't directly mentioned as being taught by the watchers. But, you know, the rest of Vomach's family was, so perhaps he learned other things and it's just not mentioned in the text. And there is an interesting parallel with the other Lamech. So, you know, we, we saw why there were two Enochs in the list. Why were there two Lamechs? The other Lamech was the righteous Lamech, the father of Noah. In another apocryphal book from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Genesis Apocryphon, we see the righteous Lamech saying this about Noah when he was born. Then I considered whether the pregnancy was due to the watchers and holy ones or to the Nephilim. And I grew perturbed about this child. Then I, Lamech, became afraid and went to Batanosh, my wife, saying, Declare to me by the Most High, by the Lord of Greatness, by the Eternal King, whether the child comes from the heavenly beings. <laughs> Lamech's wife then assures him, No, the child Noah is his. The question becomes, why did Lamech suspect even his righteous wife might have been with the watchers? Well, Probably because the other Lamech's whole family had spent time with them. Maybe because of Naama, the lovely one. It's interesting to think about. You see, Satan wants us to think we can be greater than we are. To worship the works of our hands instead of relying on God. He knows we will destroy ourselves in this way and join with Satan. It was this way with the line of Cain that the arts and technology came to be through this interaction and in today's world, you know, it's these same things that frequently are leading humans to destruction. But who were these giants that were born to the human women? Both before and after the flood, there were whole clans of them. Click right here to keep watching and learn about the Anakim, the Nephilim, and giants like Og and Goliath. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.